How's everybody doing today? Let's just look at a couple of pictures of Venus valves. What do you say? Venus valves are really the bane of my exam time. I'm always mesmerized when I come across a nice picture of a Venus valve. In this little video clip, we can see the Rouleau formation around the valve. We can see how that actually leaves with calf muscle activation, and then how the valve closes in the standing patient to prevent reflux. So my only objective is to really allow you to enjoy a few nice pictures of venous valves. I'd also like to possibly motivate you towards a better understanding of dynamic and gravitational or hydrostatic pressure and venous hemodynamics. Take a look at this short clip. This is in a person idly standing and we can see the venous valve is closed. Again, patient idly standing, the valve is initially closed. However, we can see that it is open and some flow then goes through, whether by a little bit of calf muscle activation or just a pressure gradient across that valve. At some point with idle standing, the hydrostatic column of pressure is full, and so the valve cusps will open and basically just kind of float in that column of blood. This is devastating towards the lower extremity microcirculation because we have high hydrostatic pressure or venous hypertension. And if you get a nice picture of a valve, I'd say turn transverse. These are pretty fun to look in a transverse view as well. Here's a person idle standing. The valve cusps are closed. Here's the same person, and we can see the valve in the popliteal vein is closed, and then we can watch as it opens in transverse. Pretty cool, huh? One of the things to note is that the valve opening is not as large as the diameter of the vein. Keep that in mind. Here's a transverse view of that valve in a patient with idle standing. We have the full hydrostatic column of blood, the valve cusps are open and just kind of floating. The other thing to note is look at the collection of Rouleau formation or blood cell aggregates behind the valve leaflets. We'll talk a little bit more about this as well. Well, I was taught, and it's very easy to conceptualize, that venous valves open and close due to pressure gradients within that column of blood. This is one of my all-time favorite papers, and these authors actually took a wide range of diameter and velocity measurements within that valve sinus. And due to this, they actually proposed a novel concept as to how venous valves actually operate. We know that blood cells can pool or stagnate behind these valve leaflets. Well, this group documented various points within that rhythmic venous flow where the flow would actually separate off the valve leaflets, create an eddy current that would tend to flush out these venous sinuses. They also noted and described the oscillation of the valve leaflets that we actually looked at in this nice picture. You can see how those valve leaflets kind of oscillate. If you remember that video that we looked at with the open valves, we noted that the orifice created by those valves was smaller than the valve sinus. They also took some measurements kind of through this valve sinus and noted that in fact, there was a flow acceleration through that valve orifice. So as a vascular sonographer, we're very familiar with Bernoulli. 
And Bernoulli tells us that when velocity goes up, pressure goes down. And when velocity goes down, pressure goes up. So this group proposed that it may be these velocity-induced pressure changes that actually open and close these venous valves. Pretty fascinating, I think. So I hope you enjoyed looking at some of these pretty pictures. Now get back to work and spend some time thinking about venous hemodynamics and how valves operate. And I hope you don't get too far behind on your schedule.